<laughs> okay, come on. What else? What else? Go? <laughs> slow swim to the ultimate slow. I love it. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know if six minutes is enough. I could hurry through or not. I, I keep thinking I want to talk about, um, or it keeps coming back to me, uh, this notion uh, that you have thrown out a few times about, you know, James, I don't say always has it together, but always manages to get over frustration or whatever yeah. quickly, you know, yes. and I thought, well, it might be informative to talk about how we do that, you know, what what's available to us, some actual tools to getting there, um, because it's totally applicable to being new in any country, but specifically here in Portugal, you're going to be frustrated, you're going to be disappointed, you're going to find times that you're confused, a lot of times you're confused because of the language, because of the culture, all this stuff. And the, the question becomes, what do you do with that? You know, most people who are not being mindful about it just get really pissed off. Yep. And they then need to make it bad and wrong, as we talked about. You know, It's all their fault, stupid people, stupid culture, stupid language, whatever. Yep. The frustration builds into that. So how do we avoid that? How do we be in a country that we've claimed is a place we want to be and be here, as Bob and Viv say so often, with grace, you know, just yes. be here yes. like in gratitude and, and so on. So I got to looking at, um, well, not looking at, it's consistent with why I keep bringing around this notice, choose and act mantra, because it so applies to mindfulness. We can't begin to be mindful until we notice that something's going on. And in that noticing, usually it's a feeling, a sensation of some kind, something feels off. If we don't pay attention to that and look within and say, what's going on, then we're not going to even notice that something's going on. Yeah. So that's the first thing. I'm feeling agitated. I'm feeling frustrated about this. I'm feeling out of control. That's one that that really drives people crazy. Uh, there's a sense of security in the, with this idea that we control things outside of ourselves and we don't. So if we can raise our awareness to, I feel out of control because I'm not. I'm not in control of how fast Seth moves or wh whether my thing is approved or not or how long it takes to get my license. I'm not in control of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, if I don't notice I'm feeling that sense in me, then I can't, I'm not, I can't move to the next phase of it, which is making a choice. You know, okay, I'm frustrated. I feel uh, out of control. I feel whatever I feel. So what do I want to do about that? And nothing is a choice. Do nothing about it. That's a choice. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, do something about it. Well, what do I want to do? So now it, it, from the awareness, we can be in choice and we can say, oh, well, let me take a look at my checklist. Can I do anything about that? And so often the answer is no. So if I'm being mindful and sort of freaking out, going, I need to, I want to, and being attached to it and suffering, I can let go of it. I can go, I, not, I don't have control of it. Okay, good. one, two, is there anything I can do that might help the situation? You know, it's the if yes, this, if no, that. You know, it's just that whole tree of uh, following where you want to go. Uh, if the answer to that is no, it's like, well, what do I want to do about that? It's not in my control. I can't do anything about it. Now, do I want to stay frustrated, angry, sad, whatever I'm feeling around that? Or do I not? Yeah, I do not. Okay. So continuing down, this is the mindful process because I'm paying attention to what's going on with me. I'm noticing what, that something's going on. I'm looking at what it is. I'm choosing, uh, making a choice about what I want to do about it. Uh, and ultimately then it's taking the appropriate action. And so often the action really is about letting go. Mm -hmm. I don't control it. I can't do anything about it. I don't want to be upset. What's my solution? I have to figure out a way to let go of it. And letting go isn't pretending you don't care anymore. Pretending doesn't work. It has to be genuine and authentic. So letting go would be, for me, it always starts with a deep breath. And it always starts with looking at what I'm grateful for. You know, and in this case, if I was frustrated and I bring up my driver's license, it's, it's basically done. I'm just waiting for it in the mail, but it's been four months 
And they told me I have six months where I have to renew my temporary driver license. So it's like, oh, I don't want to have to do that. <laughs> There's some attachment to it. But that's the one that I think about. So if I'm in that spot, it's like, I, okay, I don't want to feel this anxiety. I don't want to feel this feeling of, and not like I don't want to feel it, like avoid it. What I is more what I do want. I want to live in a calm, slow state. <laughs> and I yes. emphasize slow. I want yeah. to be here in appreciation and enjoy the experience I'm having right now, as opposed to being preoccupied with what's not happening over there that I have no control over. Yeah. So yeah. what am I grateful for? Breathe. Gratitude. What am I grateful for? I'm grateful I'm here. And uh, when I'm literally right here in this place, I'm looking out at trees uh, in the distance and a blue sky and the sunshine in the front yard. And it's like, oh, I'm here in Portugal. I'm really grateful for that. Mm. And then I think about the culture and I think about the people. I think specifically about the family that I'm living with. And and I'm no longer agitated and frustrated and, and fearful. I'm relaxed and in the state that I want to be. And that for me can take less than five minutes if I'm if I'm aware, if I'm mindful. So it goes back to the the whole batata shrita, which is where that came up, and I got potato chips. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I thought I was getting French fries. <laughs> this is how simple it can be. You know, and now I'm frustrated. I didn't get what I wanted. And like, well, okay, okay, do you control that? No, not anymore. Well, did they have French fries at the stall that you went to? No. So you couldn't have got them there? No. Okay. So you had no control over it. <laughs> can you do anything about it now? Well, I can eat the chips. I can throw them away. I, I can't get French fries like I wanted. It's like, okay, can you get over not having French fries? <sighs> Breathe. I'm in I the middle. <laughs> I'm in the middle of this, the, you know, the, the Pau de Mafra, uh, Feshta, uh, under the trees, uh, having a picnic with my housemate family. It's like potato chips, who cares? Like, <laughs> and I'm done with it. And, you know, the process took less than five minutes. Yes. But that's okay. the process. That's how we do it. And obviously, if you're waiting for your visa and you have an airline ticket already reserved and, and one is depending on the other, it's much more difficult to find that place because everything feels that much more important. But the process is important because maybe in that, when you get to, is there anything more I can do? You may think about it and find out, oh, yeah, I could kick off another email or I could do some more research or, you know, whatever you can do. Yes. Yes, it's where it's where your mind is at, isn't it? And what what or where your focus is and what's running in you. I've heard this expressed in a in a in an alternative sort of way of what's running in me at the moment. And you can't answer that question without stopping, can you? To 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 and consider. looking, yeah. Yeah. And that is so so such a beautiful part of this process. And that's your your constant gift to us is to invite people, I think, to look, to stop and stop, look and listen. It's like crossing the road advice, isn't it? Stop looking this, and you can't really. I mean, and you know, this. I suppose this is this is one of the. Um, this is in not in praise of uh, fast. This is in praise of slow. This is perhaps one of those processes where slowing down is useful. Yeah, um, it was just. I was going to say the same thing. And again, not like fast is bad, slow is good. But this is where slow can be beneficial. I, I yeah. don't know if we can find a place to settle if we're moving too fast yeah yeah you and yeah it's hard, to, it's hard to look and listen isn't it if you're moving constantly uh, and it might be that your constant movement is to stop looking is to is to is to have that not happen well in terms of the noticing i just got a and i i this is how i do therapy i just got a visual of walking along a highway with a beautiful scenery so i can drive past it at 80 kilometers an hour and not see most of it. Yeah, right. It's still there. Or I can be walking and I can see almost everything. If I yes. stop, I can see everything in my view. Yes. So the, the benefit of slowing down in that particular case is pretty directly relevant. I have this idealized notion of early people that even if they didn't go far, the world would eventually come to them. You know, the change of the day, the change of the seasons. It was probably enough for most human beings for a very long time, wasn't it? Until they could start flying around the world at great speed. 
and not not just in airplanes but in motor cars as well it's it's incredible um how we've changed yeah and i there's a an old saying i i don't know where it came from but i i think i've got it right it is if you want to go fast wa uh, go alone if you want to go slow yeah go with others well and said well yeah. said. And talking of others, we have, I think Bob and we've Viv got a couple. We've been keeping waiting because I we, had to get through no, my no, little they, thing. They, they, they were getting ready. Um, oh, okay. 